The Tesla Cybertruck is just one giant ripoff of the Ford Aerostar. Now just hear me out. On November 30th, 2023, the much-anticipated, much-awaited, and much-delayed Tesla Cybertruck became available to its first batch of private owners. As a small, unknown car YouTuber, I don't have the access or clout to be able to drive one, though if you or your uncle Gary happen to be watching this and want to give me a go, my email address is in the description. But as the owner of not one, but two Ford Aerostars, a car, or truck, or van, or vehicle, that broke the mold almost 40 years ago, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what's in store, because as I will lay out, the similarities between these two vehicles are uncanny. Arguably the two most glaring gimmicks the Cybertruck is bringing to the table are its stainless steel outer shell and its wedge-shaped trapezoidal profile. And while the shiny silver exterior is an obvious shout-out, whether intended or not, to an 80s icon whose aura Tesla is trying to capture both in the name Cybertruck and the general ethos of its early digital space-age retrofuturism, I would argue that for many reasons the DeLorean is a far lazier and less precise vehicular analog than the Ford Aerostar. This is no better introduced than by the introductions of each vehicle. If you clicked on this video, you've probably already seen the glaring similarities of the graphics displayed in the respective vehicle's ad campaigns. In both, we have just a simple upper profile of the vehicle, shimmering and shining in a digital glow against an all-black backdrop, like a spaceship lighting up the cold, dark void of outer space. But this is just the beginning. The origins of the Ford Aerostar go all the way back to the 1970s, Ford's full-size van, the Econoline, was slated to grow bigger, opening up an opportunity for a quote-unquote garageable van, something that could easily fit in an average homeowner's garage, have more attractive styling than a work van, and yet also have a higher roofline and more interior space than a station wagon. The result was the Ford Carousel, a fairly funky-looking thing resembling a chop-top work van with more rake to its front and rear glass and the indecisive nose of a Chevy Uplander, not quite ready to admit that it was a minivan. Originally powered by a 460 cubic inch V8, how's that for power, Elon? The carousel project was eventually shelved on account of the intersecting issues of financial constraints within the company and the lack of a real existing market for it. Subsequently, resources were diverted to developing the Fox, Panther, and F-Series platforms, an understandable decision considering how legendary and ubiquitous Mustangs, Crown Vicks, and F-150s from this era would become. It's also been suggested that Ford realized this new minivan idea might be a death knell for its Country Squire station wagon, and didn't want to spend tens of millions of dollars engineering the demise of one of its best-selling vehicles. In a strange twist of fate, the man known as the father of the minivan, and the father of knockoff I can't believe it's not butter, Lee Iacocca, was working for Ford at this time. When he left in 1978, he was joined by Hal Sperlick, who was largely responsible for the Minimax, a separate small van project within Ford, and one the casual observer would find more stylistically similar to the Aerostar. After joining Chrysler, who was also developing a garageable van, Iacocca and Sperlick would finish the job, and in 1984 the minivan was officially born, with the Badge Job Brothers Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. As an aside, <laughs> have you ever noticed how a first-gen caravan looks like they made the grill like half as big as it needed to be? And then their solution, when they realized this was the fact, was just to stack two of them on top of each other? Headlight clusters and all, just take two of them off the factory floor and smash them together. Anyways, the grand irony is that Ford could have held the distinction of inventing the minivan almost a decade earlier, and with the two key members of by then Chrysler's development team. But just like the conclusion you inevitably come to when wondering about if your parents had met different people, the result would be a world in which we would not have the greatest vehicle ever made, the Ford Aerostar. 
In the accompanying time, the gas crisis of the 1980s had emerged, and that 460 cubic inch V8, which probably would have made the van faster than a C3 Corvette, how's that for acceleration, Elon, was no longer viable. Knowing Chrysler was moving ahead with their project, Ford hunkered down, looked to the sky, and began to see the glimpses of an aero star flying their way. The fateful decision was made to create the van with a rear-wheel drive layout, something that would both condemn it to live in the shadow of the Chevy Astro for all of time, not bitter about that at all, by the way, but also allow it to eventually be developed into a four-wheel drive vehicle. In this way, the Aerostar was to become more of a truck-like van than a car-like van, and paved the way for the video essay you are watching right this moment. It's a common misnomer that the Aerostar is simply a spaceship body slapped onto a Ford Ranger pickup frame, as the VN1 chassis distinction on all Aerostar VIN numbers designates it as a unique item. I won't get into the nitty gritty details, suffice it to say that it's something of a semi-unibody chassis with model specific front and rear suspension setups. Stop. The Cybertruck hype machine began on November 19th, 2019, almost four years to the day from its eventual public release, which if you consider the Aerostar's nearly 10-year development, was not really that long, despite what seemed like endless delays along the way. But the Aerostar's release was also delayed, and both seemed to have something to do with robots, very on-brand for their respective space-age identities. First, on the Cybertruck, from a December 22, 2022 article on roboticstomorrow.com. Quote, In 2018, Tesla was on the brink of bankruptcy. They had invested billions into a new factory filled with robots that hardly worked and couldn't meet production quotas. Today, Tesla is the sixth most valuable company in the world, and its heavily automated production process is 10 years ahead of competitors. Unquote. But as late as October 2nd of this year, we were getting headlines such as Tesla's Cybertruck is still MIA from Business Insider. Compare this to June 30th, 1985, when the Chicago Tribune proclaimed, too late for 85, Ford's Aerostar van is the first 86. Like history repeating itself, the article explains, quote, the last domestic entry in the smaller van market has been delayed, Ford says because many new automation techniques at the plant took longer than expected to become fully operational. Some insiders say the robots were fine, but a few technical components in the vans weren't up to snuff." Unquote. And if technical components not being up to snuff sounds familiar, the Business Insider article hints at a similar holdup at Tesla, noting that, quote, In a leaked internal email, Musk told Tesla employees in August that the Cybertruck needs to be designed and built to sub-10 micron accuracy. A demand like this, which would require imperfections in the Cybertruck to be imperceptible to the naked eye, is an impossible task at the production phase, manufacturing experts said." Unquote. You may also remember that when it was announced, the Cybertruck was going to start at under $40,000. Granted, that was for the single motor variant, which seems to no longer be an option, at least not for now. But even the $80,000 tri-motor variant is now coming in at almost $100,000. If you want to see how things change while staying the same, just look back to the Tribune's article about the Aerostar's delay, and how releasing it as an 86 instead of an 85 model would impact buyers. Quote, Yes, 86 prices will go up. The guesstimate is that sticker prices will rise by 3-6%, to 6 with the heftiest boost on big cars with big engines. While 3% doesn't sound bad, keep in mind that that's 3% on cars going out the door at an average of $11,000." Yes, you heard that right, $11,000. I can see Jay Leno's pithy mind turning a phrase as we speak. This was your personal car yes. until I forced you to sell it to me because I was so in love with it. Well, I was in the middle of a house remodel. This okay. is the new West Wing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I would rather have this than a new bathroom any day. But then again, uh, you don't have four daughters. And because I know you're wondering, $11,000 in January of 1986 is equivalent to just under $31,000 in October of 2023, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. What's really crazy is that the average new car price in November of 2022, according to Kelly Blue Book, was $48,681. So 
So when you want to go blaming inflation for everything, which I agree sucks, just remember that in addition to all that, corporations really like money. Okay, so obviously the biggest difference between the Cybertruck and the Aerostar is that the Aerostar is not a truck. Or is it? Well, according to Motor Trend, not only is it a truck, but in 1990, it was the best truck money could buy, as they deemed it Motor Trend Truck of the Year, resoundingly proclaiming, quote, While it's never a simple thing to determine what's best in a field of contemporaries, it's at times decidedly straightforward. That's the message offered by Motor Trend's 1990 Truck of the Year competition. Ford's sleek and stylish Aerostar was introduced in May 1985 as a rear-drive, space shuttle-like harbinger of minivan styling of the future. The new four-wheel drive version is this year's hands-down winner. In Truck of the Year's objective categories, Aerostar's substantial mechanicals and roadworthy feel brought it a strong second place. And in subjective scoring, Aerostar won in three categories and finished well in all the others. Unquote. And if that's not enough to convince you, there have been over 10 documented sightings of actual Aerostar pickup trucks, with one fellow actually turning his into a five-passenger crew cab with room in the back for a hydraulic dump bed. The owner bought the vehicle for $400 and spent another $200 converting it, meaning for less than an average car payment, he had a fully functional four-wheel drive truck that could tow 5,000 pounds or haul up to a 2,000 pound load. These towing and payload figures still hold up well over 30 years later, with towing equaling and payload bettering that of a brand new Honda Ridgeline or Santa Cruz with their available towing packages. The Cybertruck has a payload capacity of 2,500 pounds in all guises and can tow 11,000 pounds in dual and tri-motor variants and 7,500 pounds in the eventual single motor variant, which is rear wheel drive. Both the Cybertruck and extended length Aerostar can fit a full sheet of plywood in the rear, but only the Aerostar can do it with the tailgate closed. While the Cybertruck can comfortably fit five adults, the Aerostar can pack in seven. And if you just can't live without the Cybertruck's panoramic all glass roof, they do make reciprocating saws and plexiglass, which you can buy with the extra fifty to ninety thousand dollars you're going to have lying around. Of course, unlike the Aerostar, the Cybertruck is fully electric. But wouldn't you know it, in 1986, at the dawn of the Aerostar's reign, Ford partnered with the Department of Energy and General Electric to produce the EXT2, an all-electric Aerostar using sodium sulfur batteries and a three-phase DC motor. Two examples were produced as a testbed for battery technology, and they each sported an impressive 100-mile range. It would be another full decade before GM released the EV1, with an almost identical range. Another first for Aerostar, and another reason it's the true spiritual successor of the Cybertruck. On January 28, 1986, at 11.39 a.m., the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart and disintegrated just 73 seconds into its mission. Seven of the nation's best and brightest souls were lost as a national tragedy played out live on television. In the wake of the investigation into the disaster, NASA would halt the space shuttle program for 32 months. It must also have been something of a panic for Ford who had just launched this ad campaign. It has been proven that the more aerodynamically styled a vehicle is, the easier it slices through the air. And now, Ford brings you the age of Aerostar. Aerostar, the most aerodynamic design in its class. Aerostar, take it to the school. Take it to the campsite. Take it to the movies. Take it to the lumberyard. Or take it to the max. Yes, anywhere you take it, Aerostar proves its versatility. Aerostar. Ford Aerostar. Now, cars and skyward flying objects had gone hand in hand almost since the beginning. Saab famously morphed out of an airplane company, and in the post-war era, everything from giant Cadillacs to sleek Corvettes had channeled aeronautical cues into their designs. But there was something about a space shuttle that was new and exciting, going beyond the Earth's atmosphere and into another world. 
Fast forward 22 years, and some South African guy who invested $6.3 million of his PayPal money into an unknown electric car company startup was now the public face of the first mass-produced EV since the aforementioned EV1. And unlike GM, he wasn't trying to take back his car so he could destroy them. Although, to carry on the space theme, he did send one into orbit. The modern rocket age marketing of the Cybertruck is no surprise considering Musk's business dealings in outer space, both with SpaceX and its subsidiary Starlink. And it's an easy transition from an Aerostar's profile being match cut with that of a space shuttle to proclaim its aerodynamics, to a Cybertruck pulling a giant rocket engine to boast of its towing capacity. But the similarities don't end there. As Cybertruck shows off its giant set of screens in front and rear, declaring itself a theater on wheels, the Aerostar was its equivalent for the audio era, offering never-before-seen rear headphone jacks and volume controls for dedicated listening of the rear passengers. Aerostar even came with its own headphones. After all, how do you think I'm recording this voiceover? The advertising at times gets so similar that we have almost the exact same scene playing out, a wholesome family cozily camping in the back of their new space-age vehicle. And maybe that's because the overall message of both these vehicles is the same, a never-before-seen, futuristic-looking, do-anything vehicle that will make you stand out in a crowd and astound you with its versatility and capability. The only difference is, with the Cybertruck, we actually have seen this before. It was called the Age of Aerostar. To just beat you over the head with this one more time, a couple of epilogue-worthy addendums that I saw during the making of this video. The famous director, actor, and New York Knicks fan Spike Lee recently confirmed his Cybertruck reservation, calling it a spaceship on four wheels. This is the crystallization of my thesis, because that's what I and the underground yet thriving Aerostar community have been calling our Earthbound spaceships for years and years. And if you see this, Mr. Lee, why not make an Aerostar a Spike Lee joint? Pick one up in silver and park it next to your Tesla. Finally, the very nice folks at the wonderfully janky website Torque News have an article making the case for the Cybertruck as a police vehicle. As you might have guessed, the Aerostar response is, of course, yep, been there, done that. And oh yeah, we can't forget about taxis, too. And postal vehicles. And UPS trucks. I could go on. Interestingly, both Tesla and Ford entered their markets after their competitors. By the fall of 1985, the Aerostar was already behind the Chrysler minivans, the Toyota van, and the Chevy Astro. Now the Cybertruck comes on the heels of releases by Rivian, Hummer, and Ford's F-150 Lightning. But if they were late to the party, well, at least they were both fashionably late. So let the games begin. The benchmark is 2,029,577. That's how many Aerostars came off the line at the St. Louis assembly plant. My goal here is not in any way to disparage the Cybertruck. I'm actually rooting for it. Because just like the Cybertruck, there are a lot of people who disregard the Aerostar and call it an ugly piece of this? shit. Critics aside, however, the people who bought them generally liked them, and the Aerostar reigned for 12 long years as a largely unchanged singular generation, even escaping extinction twice as public demand twisted Ford's arm into selling it alongside its front-wheel drive replacement, the Windstar, for an additional two years after it was originally scheduled for discontinuation following the 1995 model year. And while the Aerostar is a somewhat rare sight in the wild these days, you see a lot more of them than first-gen wind stars. Elon's shenanigans aside, and there are a lot of shenanigans, I hope the Cybertruck never changes its style and remains a singular form, and 30 or 40 years from now, we see them from time to time and think, oh yeah, remember when those things came out? They were actually pretty cool. And maybe, just maybe, people nowadays will have a similar reaction next time they see a Ford Aerostar. Star.
So please believe me, please heed me when I give you this advice. If you take the keys and drive off fucked up, it won't end nice. So just slow down and cruise and get rid of that feedback.